What it do, y'all? This is Chris Evans, and this is Talking Data and More. And today I have a very special guest. My guest has led and oversaw multi million dollar project initiatives as a data delivery director, program deck director. She's also an agile coach today, and she's recently moved to sunny Australia. Welcome, my guest, Jyoti Dandana. Welcome, Jyoti. Hi, Chris. Thank you for having me. And yes, it's beautiful and sunny out here. We're almost in our finishing winter, so looking forward to summer pretty soon. That's awesome. I'm very glad to be here with you. And like you said, I have led and breathed through data initiatives, um, right from data warehousing to ETL development to my beautiful, beautiful reporting and analytics and um, everything data, be it data modeling, business glossary, metadata management, and now recently to coaching in data programs. So, so happy to be here. Awesome, Jyoti. I really appreciate you taking the time and spending it with me today on Talking Data and More. And as you provided that brief introduction, you know, I think you still undersold yourself. You are much more. Can you, for the folks that don't know who you are, can you give them that brief introduction? Sure, why not? Um, I have been doing IT. I've been in IT for almost 18 years now. And I started my career in a small company as a mainframe developer. So literally started my career with a COBOL development, loved the JCL kicks, um, grew into an ETL developer. Um, the company had recently bought license for Ab Initio, which was not a known tool at that time. And it used Unix and SQL quite heavily. So we didn't have the GUI that people have right now. So I had privilege of working with that tool very, very, very early on. Um, and that means that I had to master the skills of Unix and SQL quite a bit. Um, loved SQL, loved data from there, got into data mining a little bit. I always, always wondered why people use data, what kind of data, what do they actually do with it? So analysis and analytical reporting became my area of passion. And I think I followed that quite a bit. So with ETL, I started walking into Cognos reporting, business object reporting, microstrategy, click view, all of those tools. And I love to see the different dashboards and reports. And I love to fiddle with the data in the background. <laughs> so what happens if I change a birth date a little bit? Or what happens if I change the policy <laughs> end date? <laughs> so just running my fingers around data just to see how and what impact it has downstream. It gave me a lot of pleasure. Um, I used to work with Snowflake model quite a bit, ER diagrams, um, loved doing DB2 queries, and all, ultimately I started doing data modeling, which was not an easy task. Had quite a lot of big senior people with a lot of experience teaching me how to do that. So I enjoyed that bit quite a bit. Um, with that, I got into data delivery. The focus was more into delivering solutions be it data migration or integration projects, or the last big one that I did was a data lake. So that is kind of my consulting and delivery experience. With that, I think I got noticed quite a bit as an SME into data, all things data. Um, and I also started using agile process for data delivery. So people started asking me if I could help out other programs, if I could consult them, if I could give them a little bit of advice on which frameworks to use. I think that's when somebody noticed me high up saying she has some valuable knowledge and asked me if I would like to try coaching. Now coaching for me was not very different from consulting because I was already doing that with my client. But I saw the difference when I started getting into it quite a bit. Um, and I'm very proud that I've been able to coach data programs. That's awesome, Jyoti. And I love that you mentioned about the passion. I could see it, especially as you talk about it, with your whole experience in data. You know, and, and you know, I have to ask, because you mentioned and you talk about passion, and you could see in the background, and I ask all my guests this, right? Who is your favorite comic book character, cartoon character, anime character, and why? You know, I got to ask. I usually feel scared to answer that question because people may judge me. <laughs> but looking at your wall, I'm pretty sure you and I would agree on this. Um, I am very fond of Wonder Woman. Diana King for me <laughs> has to be that. That's awesome. I love Wonder Woman. You know, 
princess of the Amazonian warriors, you know, representing. That's a great. And I think for you, somebody who has the passion in data, who's had the ability to work, wear multiple hats, like I would say, right? That is a perfect persona to, in the comic book realm, to represent you, Jyoti. I love it. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> and, you know, with Wonder Woman, you know, her data, you know, her superpowers, right? I would like to translate that to your data superpowers, right? As a delivery manager, as an agile coach, can you talk about the role of an agile coach and what is the value for an organization to have an agile coach or a data agile team? Can you talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, that's a good analogy <laughs> with the Wonder Woman. <laughs> I wish I had the lasso though. <laughs> Would make my life that's so much right. simpler. Um, <laughs> I see agile coaches as that secret sauce, which when put in the mix, gives you the most delicious soup you've ever had. <laughs> it's a catalyst role. It's a role that would help you understand the need for a change, the how and why, and when of a transformation. Because quite often you see and hear people saying, oh, we need to change, we need to progress, we need to deliver, we need to do things. The problem is, we ask people to commit on a change, but we don't give them the clarity or communication. That is where the coaches come in and help a lot. They seek and provide that clarity of the transformation and they communicate that transformation. That's where you can actually see people committing to transformation. Um, an agile coach is very valuable to an organization which wants to tread on the path of a culture change. Because being agile, and doing agile are two very different things. You can do agile, you can have the processes, you can invest as much as you want in fancy tools, but if the mindset of people is not influenced and if they are not with you on that journey, there's not much success you can achieve. So the team needs to be there, the people need to be there with you on that journey. And that's where the coaches excel. Um, they also, help people understand where the flow of work is blocked. It's very interesting and very important for an organization to understand the system of their work, the flow of work. And oftentimes we think, oftentimes it happens, we always focus on IT development, testing, and keep pressurizing saying, cut your cycle time, cut your cycle time, make it faster, do testing faster. But what we need to see is a bigger picture. What happens before work goes over there? Where does it start? What are the various hops it's going through? Where is the flow getting stuck? This is where coaches come in and actually help visualize that end-to-end -end picture and they help with flow efficiencies. Yeah, I totally agree. And I love how you talk about that value for the agile coach. And I think in just general, right, regardless, is it an organization trying to be data-driven, utilizing the coach, right? Pretty much anything we do, even with sports, with somebody who's a Giants player, you need that coach, right? That's going to lead you to success. That's going to lead you to the overall vision, especially as now companies and organizations want to move to the cloud, need data faster, are looking for data quality. Totally agree with you on that, Jyoti. Love it. 